If you want to get a reader's attention, start with a title. Here's my fifth rule. Be direct. People are busy. We don't have a lot of time. And even when we do have a lot of time, some of us aren't that interested in subtlety. Some of us don't understand subtlety. So here are some titles that get to the point especially well. In case there are children watching this video, I'm going to abbreviate the next title, which I will call F Feelings. One Shrink's Practical Advice for Managing All of Life's Impossible Problems. The shrink who wrote this book collaborated on it with his daughter, a comedy writer, and the result is a delightfully irreverent work of practical advice that tells you when you should stop feeling frustrated and, as the authors politely suggest, get your head out of your ass. One of Simon & Schuster's greatest authors, David McCullough, does not mess around with his titles. John Adams, 1776, Truman, The Wright Brothers. When you're as good as David McCullough, all you have to do is write the book and the rest takes care of itself. Walter Isaacson's original title for his biography of Steve Jobs was Hi Steve. I loved it and I thought it was very clever. Steve Jobs didn't agree. And since Steve Jobs was the marketing genius and we weren't, we agreed to the title that he suggested to Walter Isaacson, which was Steve Jobs. Uh, Herman Melville's original title for Moby Dick was Mocha Dick, which sounds like a beverage at Starbucks. Uh, but Mocha Dick was actually the name of the whale that inspired Melville. And at the last minute, Melville changed the title to Moby Dick. Either way, it was a novel about a whale and he got right to the point. Coming up with a title for a book about therapy is a challenge because you don't want to be too clinical or dry. Lori Gottlieb's title is brilliant because it's gentle and edgy and suggestive all at once. Maybe you should talk to someone. We all know what that means. The best direct title I ever worked on was for Laura Hillenbrand's first book and her instant classic, Sea Biscuit. Just about everyone at Random House who read the manuscript prior to publication knew the book was something very special, and we wanted to make sure we had the perfect title. We started with Sea Biscuit, but somebody suggested we change it to Dark Horse instead to give people a clearer idea of what the book was actually about. We even printed up advanced reader's editions of Dark Horse, and one of those copies is currently for sale on eBay for about $500. When we introduced the book to our sales force, they urged us to go back to calling the book Seabiscuit, because even if you didn't know who Seabiscuit was, there was only one Seabiscuit, and there were a lot of Dark Horses out there galloping around. I'm glad we listened. It took Bruce Springsteen six months to write the song Born to Run. When we published his memoir, there was never any question that Born to Run would be the title. Bruce delivered the manuscript with that title and no one ever questioned it. And finally, the best phrase any novelist has ever coined in the history of popular fiction. It would have to be The Godfather, which had never referred to the criminal underworld until Mario Puzo used that term in his novel. I had the privilege of editing Mario Puzo's final novels, and in one book, he wrote that The Godfather was really based on his mother, that whenever The Godfather spoke, it was his mother's voice he heard. I tried to convince Mario to call one of his books The Godmother, but I was not successful. And that is the word according to Carr.